Hello, Sawyer here. Welcome to Real Numbers, the show that discovers math by solving real-world problems. This week, we need to use our geometrical wits to defend an art museum from a nefarious art thief. The curator of an art museum discovered that a lock on a spring-line window in one of the display rooms is broken. The shape of the window is a square of side length one meter, with a semicircle on top whose diameter is the top of the square. The art museum houses several valuable paintings that come in various large rectangular shapes. All of the paintings are about three meters wide and have differing heights. For the purposes of this problem, we can assume that the framed paintings are two-dimensional but cannot be removed from their frames to be bent or folded. In order to select the works to house in the room, the curator wants to know what is the tallest frame that an art thief could slide out of the window when it is wide open. Submit your solution with an explanation or photo of your work on this page. Now let's solve the geometrical challenge from last week's episode. There's a link to that video in the description. You and your friend have taken your toy boat wavy down to the river, whose banks were parallel lines 100 meters apart. Your friend on a dock directly across the river from the dock you were on pointed Wavy at you and placed it in the water. Two forces moved Wavy. Its motor pushed it forward at a constant rate, and the river pulled it downstream at a different constant rate. You went to collect the boat 60 meters downstream from your dock, and now you want to send it back to your friend. Knowing Wavy's motor will propel it at the same speed and the flow of the river will be the same, you want to calculate the point on the opposite shore towards which to aim the boat so it exactly meets your friend at the dock 60 meters upstream. Just like in the previous problem of the week, you know the trajectory of the boat coming towards you was a combination of the motor pushing the boat 100 meters directly across the river and the river carrying the boat 60 meters downstream. This means Wavy moves at 5 thirds the speed of the river. Let's call the point you are at, 60 meters downstream from your dock, A. Now you want to aim at a point B, which is X meters upstream of your friend, so that the motor will push the boat along the hypotenuse AB, while the river will carry the boat downstream X meters. So the combination of the two will exactly send the toy boat to your friend's dock. For these two distances to line up, you need the ratio of them to equal 5 thirds again. That is, 5 thirds equals AB over x, which is the square root of 100 squared plus quantity x plus 60 squared over x by the Pythagorean theorem. Clearing denominators, we get 5x equals 3 times the square root of 100 squared plus x plus 60 quantity squared. And squaring both sides gives 25x squared equals 9 times 10,000 plus x squared plus 120x plus 3,600. Now we can collect all terms on the left to get 16x squared minus 1080x minus 122,400 equals 0, which we can then solve using the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And a is equal to 16, b is negative 1080, and c is negative 122,400. So this gives x equals 255 over 2, or negative 60. We can throw away the x equals negative 60 solution because we know that our answer is positive. However, it's instructive to figure out why that nonsense solution appears. I'll leave that to the viewer with the hint that it has to do with the step of squaring both sides that we use to solve. So our final solution is you should point wavy 255 over 2, or 127.5 meters upstream of your friend. Often when I find a computational solution to a math problem, I look around to see if I can find a nicer solution. Occasionally, upon doing so, I reveal a new property of the solution that I didn't even notice was there. This was such an occasion. It turns out that we can solve this problem without even using the Pythagorean theorem by noticing a clever geometrical fact. Let's look back at the diagram of the boat's trajectory, and let's label a few more points. We'll call your dock C and your friend's dock D 
and this point in the middle of the river where the two motor trajectories cross, E. Since the two banks are parallel, geometry tells us that the triangle ACE is similar to the triangle BDE. This means that the ratios of their side lengths are equal. So in particular, CE over AC equals DE over BD, and AE over AC equals BE over BD. Now, we also know that the ratios of certain lengths in this diagram have to be equal, because they are equal to the ratio of the speed of the boat to the speed of the river. These are CD over AC equals AB over BD. Breaking up the numerators into the two subsegments, we get CE plus DE over AC equals AE plus BE over BD. Now we can substitute the previous equalities and factor out a like term on both sides to get DE equals AE. This implies triangle ADE is isosceles, and angles EAD and EDA are equal. Let's call this angle theta. Now we draw a line orthogonal from the riverbank from A and label the point directly across the river from you F. Then since AF and ED are parallel, angle DAF also equals angle EDA, so equals theta, which implies that the angle BAF is 2 theta. We already know that tan theta, which is opposite over adjacent, so is AC over CD, or 3 fifths. By the double angle formula for tangent, tangent of 2 theta is 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta, and plugging in 3 fifths for tan theta gives 15 eighths. Using the right triangle ABF, we can see that tan of angle BAF is x plus 60 over 100, so 15 eighths equals x plus 60 over 100, and solving for x gives x equals 255 over 2, or 127.5 meters. Agreement with our earlier calculation. Woohoo! What a cool use of the double angle formula. Okay, let's get back to the problem of the week. We wanted to figure out the tallest painting that one could slide through an open window that's the shape of a square of side length 1 with a half circle added at the top. Submit your answer below, along with any comments or other geometrical questions you come up with. I'll see you next week with another problem to solve.